Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example of the pendulum with simple harmonic motion is the case where we have a pendulum where we measure the period to be one second and we're wondering what is the length of the pendulum. Starting again from our base equation that the angular frequency of the oscillation of a pendulum is equal to the square root of g divided by l. We also remember that omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency and that the frequency is equal to 1 over the period which means that omega can be written as 2 pi times 1 over the period, or the period can be written as 2 pi times 1 over omega. If omega is equal to the square root of g over l, then 1 over omega is equal to the inverse of that, which is the square root of l over g. That means that the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the length of the pendulum divided by the acceleration due to gravity, which means if we now want to find the length, what we can do here is we can square both sides of this equation. We can write t squared is equal to 4 pi squared times l divided by g. And solving this equation for l, meaning we can write g over here with the t squared, and the 4 pi squared comes down here. Turn the equation around, we get l is equal to g times t to the second power divided by 4 pi to the second power. And that's the equation that we need to find the length of the pendulum. The length is equal to acceleration due to gravity, the period squared, divided by 4 pi squared. Plug it in the numbers. 9.8 divided by 4 divided by pi squared equals, in this case, the length of the pendulum is equal to 0 0.248 meters, and since we have two significant figures, we can say L is equal to 0 0.25 meters. That's the answer to this particular example. Again, it's usually manipulation of the equation of omega in terms of the frequency, the period, and then any one of the other unknowns would be either be L or G. And that's how we solve these types of problems with the pendulum.